Hey, FR Sky fans, this is Steve with Free Sky, and today we're going to talk about a topic that is something perhaps you don't really super want to think about, which is your plane not being in control while you're flying it. Um, but when that happens, it is a situation that scares the living hell out of you, and it is a horrible feeling. And a few seconds can make or break the entire experience. Uh, it can have you be in a position where you get your plane back, or it could be in a position where your plane is not going to cause damage to other people or other property. So it's something we need to think about. And unfortunately, I found gazillions of videos and articles and things like that on fails, um, everything else related to Ethos and uh, some of our older systems like OpenTX. But when it came to failsafe, it was kind of not really super discussed. So I wanted to do a bit of a deep dive into this today and discuss with you what this is all about and give you some things to think about. So hopefully that I hope you never have to use this. This is your last resort. This is a major problem. And, um, but let's, uh, we set this up not because we're planning on using it. We're setting it up. So we're hoping we're not using it, but if it does happen, you have options in front of you. Um, to get to fail safe, I mean, typically you know, people will hear, welcome to ethos, fail safe, not set. And you're like, what does this mean? So we're, I'm going to show you how to get into it. And I'm going to show you some different options in fail safe, including one that's not super well documented. And I had to do some research and ask a few people about it. Uh, what I want to do is first take you into model and showing the mixer. This is a typical plane setup. We have ailerons, elevator, throttle, rudder, two ailerons. I have flaps on one channel, landing gear on another channel. This is a pretty vanilla setup. So uh, it's playing with flaps and landing gear and two ailerons. So not a lot to talk about here. This is not a very sophisticated model, but um, what we're going to do is we're going to get out of here and we're going to go into the RF system. Uh, what I have set up is an access receiver. It's a 2.4 gigahertz receiver. I do fly with these receivers. It's registered. It's bound. Um, and of all the receivers we have, the 2.4 gigahertz has the shortest amount of range, but it is a range that typically is much further than you can see. So um, I fly with them all the time, and I believe in them, and I don't really have a problem flying large expensive planes on 2.4 gigahertz uh but if i want to heads my bet i fly tandem as you can see the fail safe i had set up to custom but i'm going to show you what it looks like typically when you find this uh you'll hear fail safe not set and you'll see fail safe not set and then you click on it and you have four options and i'm going to discuss the four options hold custom no pulses and receiver um, I'm not going to uh, talk about this in order. This one would be the last topic. Um, let's go into hold first of all. This is a very easy one to set up. And it, what it essentially says is whatever your last stick input was before you went to fail safe, it's going to continue on with that. So if you, for example, were flying straight and level, and you're flying away from yourself, maybe you went through a bad RF patch where you have some RF interference for a very brief moment of time, and maybe you fly through that patch and things are hunky dory once you get through it, and then the plane will keep flying straight and level for a second or two, you can regain radio control and hopefully bring it back. Or you could be flying out of the range of the receiver and you will keep flying out of the range of the receiver and the plane is flying straight and level and depending how much battery you have is how far away it's going to fly. And hopefully it's not going to fly into a populated city. Uh, hopefully it will fly off somewhere and crash and not do any damage. Um, 
So this is one of those things that I'd say you use. It's easy to set because all you have to do is just say hold and then it's set and that's a fail safe and uh, it will work. Um, you know, but it's kind of rolling the dice. It might work out well. Maybe it won't work out well. So uh, if that's not, not good enough for you. It's after reviewing all this, it's no longer good enough for me. So I this was my de facto failsafe that I used for all my planes, but after researching this topic, I am not going to be using this anymore. Uh, custom is the one that I'm going to use, but that's the last one we're going to talk about. No pulses, and what this essentially means is that the transmitter says to the receiver, hey, if I stop talking to you, you stop talking to everything that's hooked up for you. It's radio silence on your end. No pulses, nothing comes out, everything's relaxed, um, and that's that. So, um, I, for a line of sight plane, this isn't really the best setup because um, you have no idea what this control surfaces will move to. Um, so, this is actually used quite a bit for things like INAV fixed wing planes because what it essentially says is to the receiver was going to say to the flight controller i got nothing and the flight controller says okay we're going to fail safe i have a gps coordinate logged on my flight controller when we first armed the plane and we're going to fly back to that coordinate and hopefully you'll get your radio signal back as we get closer to you and it works surprisingly well but that's a really whole different story setting up an INAV fixed wing plane uh, there's it's a great uh, lot of it's a growing um, community it's great um, but for people who fly line of sight planes this is not really an option they're willing to pursue so this is because of that this is not really for line of sight pilots receiver this was the one that I looked up and what as far as I could tell I mean I had to ask quite a few people I think this was the forerunner to this. So receiver was the forerunner to custom. And essentially what it was is that you would move your control, you would move your sticks into whatever position you want them to be. So maybe your throttle is up a quarter of the way and you have your uh, ailerons and your elevator dead center. And then what you do when everything looked right, you push the fail safe or actually the Sometimes they're marked as fail safe, but usually we call them the bind button or the register button on the receiver, and it logs it. And we're not exactly sure if that still works anymore. I think it still works that way, but we haven't tested it. I, this is kind of passe now. Uh, the one we use now is custom. And so custom, let me take you down and show you what it looks like. Uh, I'm going to go down to channel 11 here and you can see you have a few different options you have hold which means that whatever the last like i mentioned before whatever the last stick input was that's what it's going to be or switch input if that's the case uh, it's going to hold that uh, then you have no pulses which i described before means that it has nothing it's not going to give any information whatsoever uh, so um that means it could pot potentially flip a switch. Custom means that we're going to have things set in predetermined ways. Now on this plane, I'm going to tell you, this is not a prototype plane for you to, this is not gospel. This is information for you to take from it and, and do what you need to do. I'm going to discuss my rationale for setting up this up. I tend to fly large uh, glider foamies, things that are very light, very large, that have a lot of lift and they can keep on flying. So they kind of self right themselves and they, you know, are very forgiving type of planes. Um, so if you're flying a turbine jet, I'll kind of go down the list here and talk about how things might you might want to set up. So ailerons, I have set channels one and five the same way which is zero percent which means that it's not rolling at all so it's going to they're kind of level with the wing 
and so it's not turning. Elevator, I'm not giving any up elevator or down elevator. Uh, my thinking is sometimes I get so high up, I worry about if I give it some more up elevator, I might be flying even higher up, which means I would be even further away from my radio link. Um, I don't want to give it ele elevator to bring the plane down because sometimes I'm flying low to the ground and I, I don't want it to go into fail safe for a brief second and crash the plane if I'm only a few feet off the ground. So 0% is something I feel comfortable with. Throttle, I, um, when it's at 0%, it means that the throttle's halfway up. When it's at negative 100%, it means it's off. If you are flying a turbine jet, you have to set this, you push the min button here and this will go to negative 100 and that will turn off your turbine and that's what you need to do. Uh, when I set to negative 50, that means I'm giving it quarter throttle and I'm hoping that, you know, when I go into fail safe that I'll have a little bit of throttle to keep the plane going. Um, I'm going to discuss my strategy of how I want to work with this and keep in mind this might only be for a few seconds that this is important. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm keeping everything straight and level except for rudder. I'm turning the rudder and my hope is that by doing a nice big simple yaw turn I can turn the plane around and get into better radio range and regain control of the plane and bring it back. So that is why I do this. Now I'm hedging my bets by if I have oh, landing gear, actually before I go through here I should just mention flaps and landing gear. Um, flaps I have set up as custom. It's negative 100%. So that might mean that the flaps are all the way down. Um, maybe on this play maybe I only want them down about 20% or 30%. What that will do is give me a little bit more stability. So I probably would set this to negative 30%. Uh, that would help keep the plane stable as we're in fail safe and hopefully not rolling around as much in the wind. Uh, the gear I bring up simply because I'm imagining it would be something like a robot landing gear. If worse comes to worse and the plane crashes, if the gear is up, perhaps the gear can be reusable on another plane. Um, and then on uh, channel 14, if I was flying with a stabilized receiver, what this would mean is that um, it would be when I set this to if somehow it moved, it should be 0%. That is 0% means stabilization on. Um, if you were to do minimum, which is a negative 100%, that means that self level is on, but self level doesn't always mean that the plane's going to fly level. Sometimes it loses altitude because of the aerodynamic properties of the airfoil, and therefore I try to avoid that. Uh, you can go to max and have it off if you would like to so you can take turn stabilization off i'm going to keep it at zero so i have stabilization on hoping that a little bit of wind current will not uh, have too much effect on the plane as it's making its broad yaw turn back towards me and that is how i would set up fail safe for one of my planes and this is just food for thought is something for you to think about uh, one other thing I would recommend, though the one time I had a bad fail safe was because I had antennas glued on a foam plane to, um, uh, it was on a tail. I had a very small receiver in the back of the plane and it, the receiver itself was on the horizontal stabilizer and the antenna was taped to a vertical stabilizer. And as I was landed, um, it put so much stress on the receiver that it actually yanked it out of the the antenna out of its socket and I didn't know because I had this receiver it's a small little R9MM I had it under shriek wrap and I couldn't see that it actually had broken off and because of this it put the plane into failsafe so 
Um, be careful about how you mount your receivers. You want to make sure they're all on the same surface uh, for the antennas or you don't have them so tight that they can potentially rip out if the plane flexes. Um, but the bottom line is, I know this is a topic that is not a sexy topic. This is something we don't really want to think about. But first and foremost, when we think about fail saves, what we want to do is keep people and property safe. That is above everything else we do in the hobby. Keeping people and property safe is number one. And number two is I would really like you to see you return home with your plane. Hopefully this fail safe will give you those few seconds of divine intervention to bring the plane back to you so you can regain control and land it safely. My name is Steve. I can be reached at Steve at FR Sky negative RC negative sign RC dot com. So that's Steve at FR Sky negative sign RC dot com. And I do thank you for watching.